Farewell moving parts. I made it back home for Christmas, just in time, Christmas Eve, and uh, what a Christmas miracle we have here today. Uh, we've got the LC475, and uh, I'd just like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, of course. Um, if uh, you're watching this and it's not Christmas anymore, um, just uh, consider it for the year that's uh, coming up. And uh, we're playing with the LC475 again. Uh, today we have uh, this little device, doohickey, uh, which is a card reader. You typically see these in um, one of those places, uh, department stores, uh, like Kmart, uh, Kodak Photo stores, things like that. And it's got a whole bunch of things on the front, PCM, CIA, Smart Media, Compact Flash, Picture Card, Memory Stick SD. So, what are we doing? Well, it's a SCSI interface, which uh, got me excited, because uh, so is the LC475, which is completely out of focus there, so we'll look at this. Uh, this is an SCM PCD 60B. There's also a 50B version out there, uh, as you can almost see. There are some jumpers for something or other to do with the termination. And there's a whole bunch of other jumpers to do with something. And what we're going to do is we're just going to try and see um, if I can boot to some sort of floppy on this and get it to recognize any of these. Now, apparently, um, these older Macs only recognize the, um, the LUN, the LUN, LUN0, which uh, in this case is the PCM CIA uh, slot is why I have a SanDisk, which I, is probably counterfeit, uh, to compact flash to gigabyte. So if that recognizes, that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, it'll only boot to the PCMCAA card. So if I can get it to boot to that, that's fantastic. Um, and then I can use maybe an SD card as just extra storage because the other SCSI devices will show up, uh, apparently. But you know, it's, it's all just guesswork at the moment. I've got a, oh yeah, you can see on the bezel there where it fell off the back of a G3i Mac at uh, my friend's house, which uh, was a bit of a whoops. But uh, let's get on to, uh... oh I forgot how easy these things are to take apart. So what have we got in there at the moment? We've got the 160 meg hard drive. Disk tools, there we go, that's, that's good. That will uh, come in handy. Um, you may need to use a... Oh, what'd they say? I was really, There's a forum page. I'll, I'll link to it, but... Uh, butter goes good in cakes. Anyway, uh, yeah, so... Uh, Got to get the old hard drive out. Which thankfully is just a few plastic clips away, but I can't do it with uh, one hand, so I'll be back in a second. Okay, it's installed. Don't believe me? Too bad. It's installed. No, I'll show you. So uh, it does actually fit in there. I didn't put the uh, the bracket on though, which is sitting over there. Uh, as you can see, that's flush. The uh, the physical drive is slightly longer than your average drive, so that could be a problem on these uh, pizza box shaped um, pizza box shaped Macs. Now, of course, the card in the front is going to poke out a bit, just because it wants to. But if you squash it in, look at that. Perfect. Okay, perfect would have it been it fitting in the mount and everything, but that is a good second best. So squash it up. Just about flush. Look at that. Fantastic. And uh, let's fire it up. I guess I can just turn it on because I've got the disc here. Now I've got two LCs. This is the one that had the case damage, so it's sort of my backup LC, I suppose. So it should have a 512K of video RAM, and the other one has one meg. All right, so it does take a while to boot to uh, disk tools, as I remember, unless it's trying to boot to the. Is SCSI good to hot swap? Oh, 
They're all good. So while that's booting, uh, this, yeah, this one, I'm still waiting on some uh, 68 ko 4 os um, that are not LC to arrive. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't make it here before Christmas. Would have been nice, but you only get what you can take, or you only take what you can get. Yes. But a Merry Christmas. I hope everyone's got something nice planned. Um, what am I doing? This will probably be a bit of a. This will probably be my only video for today, and for a few more mm, weeks probably. I suspect. Oh, I might be up here in a week or so for New Year's, but uh, you know, we'll just have to see how we go. <sighs> so it's uh, floppy disks are a bit slow. What I should be doing right now is uh, finding a the right uh, tool to format the memory card with. But let's just give the built-in disk tool SCSI utility whatever a go and see what happens. There's the bracket on that. So it screws into the base. Hmm. Should be interesting. Okay, so we have booted up. Let's get disappointed when nothing works. Yeah. Drive setup light. Sounds unpromising. Have I even got the determination set correctly on this thing? Lun. It's a very light um, device, obviously, just not having any rubbish that that thing has built into it, like motors and metal. But I'd say that's probably going to go nowhere, so we'll just leave it doing its little spinning thing. It's not a beach ball, it's... I guess it could be a beach ball, a very crude beach ball. Precursor to the spinning beach ball of modern day Mac OS. When you have low RAM or a failing hard drive. So uh, I'll be back after I've uh, found some random utility off that uh, forum page. So I'll be back. Oh, I just jammed the uh, case on. And it does pretty much fit, which is uh, clips on at the back. So don't be scared. They are expensive though, these things. I might pick mine up for about 160 shipped uh, Australian dollars, that is. Uh, being the strongest economy in the universe at the moment, um, that's quite expensive. But, uh, you know, it's an LC-475. You, you don't make exceptions. I mean, no, you do, you do make exceptions. Maybe you've got a Mac that's uh, just as close to you, but LC-475 is mine. Uh, that is still doing that, so I need to go find that utility. Well, it's now two days since I started doing this, so it's now a uh, boxing day. Uh, or one day. Anyway, uh, we've now got, uh, yeah, still got the 2 gig card in there, um, hooked in. Um, I've managed to get it detected with a program called uh, Lido, or Lido, depending on your pronunciation of the software. And uh, as you can see there, it's detected a pretty much a 2 gig optical disk drive, not a Macintosh disk, which is good. Um, there's also a version of drive setup that might work that I didn't try. Uh, one of the biggest things that I had discovered I was not doing is the instructions on the bottom of this, for me, are a little bit confusing because I'm not terribly uh, uh, SCSI savvy, I suppose. But uh, terminating SCSI is pretty important. I'll just get a zoom in on the settings here. There you go. So the very first notch there is termination on and the rest are IDs. 
So all you need to do is have a jumper on that uh, termination one at the top there, and it will work a charm. Apparently. Well, I haven't actually formatted it yet, but uh, look, we'll give that a go right now. So I'm currently I'm booting to Disk Tools, uh, which is OS 8. I don't know where I got this version of Disk Tools, but uh, it's quite good for booting. It was good for our 68K Max, that's all that I had noted. So I guess, I'll, I'll try it, I've got an SD card here, just a 128 Meg 1. I don't know how good SCSI is with plug and play. If I can even get it to plug in properly. Oh, LED came on. Just do a scan of the bus. Uh, nope, didn't like that, so I'll just leave that out. Scan the bus again, and uh, let's give it an easy setup. Destroy all data, I don't care. I don't think there's anything on there. I get to select an icon, that's pretty cool. Um, let's go with this cool looking... No. Yeah, it's just a... Regular old hard drive. Format failed. Cool. Format failed. Hmm. That can't be good. But at least it's detected. Whoa, it's trying to read it by the looks. Trying to mount it. Should not have pressed mount. Lesson learnt, I'll be back when I've got some progress. Uh, I've hooked it up and tried drive setup and it's uh, saying it's not supported. You cannot modify a disk in an unsupported drive, so it, it does seem as though it's recognising the, the caddy separate of the actual disk itself. So I need to check and make sure this is 100% read-write, so I'm going to do that using uh, one of those millions of cards I've got. Uh, I've got a couple of SCSI ones. I've actually found a PCI SCSI one, which is fantastic, so I'll try it running on... Uh, try connecting up the drive and just seeing if I can read and write to this card. Here we go! It's not very often that things kind of go right uh, when you're trying to solve something, but uh, it has actually been detected. So uh, we've got card reader hooked in over a giant SCSI cable into some adaptic uh, PCI card, and it is actually just working. It's detected, so that's fantastic news. Let's just have a quick look. Uh, this drive. So there's all the different devices, compact flash, memory stick, PC card, SD, smart media, and XD. So at the moment the D drive is LUN0, which is the PC card, so we're going to that. Copy some files onto there. It works. And I can take those with me wherever I go. Uh, so really, I just need to work out a way to get it formatted correctly so the, uh, the Mac side can recognise it properly. I did also check the revision of the firmware, which is uh, 1.2.8, which is the latest available. You can do that by disk drives and then just choose PC card. And look under details, revision 1.28 right there. So that is... Good. So that's good to know that I have a uh, functional SCSI card as well um, for 50 pin. That uh, will definitely come in handy in the future for updating firmwares and whatnot. Uh, so, yeah, next step is to get this drive formatted well enough to work. Hope maybe there's a Windows application out there that can do it better than the uh, old Mac applications. I would like to give another one a hard disk tool by FWB, I think it is, a try. Uh, I haven't come across a copy yet, but uh, I'm gonna have another look, see what I can find. Cool. I think we've got some progress happening. Uh, at the moment it is 
doing some things. Uh, I had to go to the file menu to bring this up. Using any of these on the side had no success. So we're using version 1.6 or 1.63 of uh, FWB's hard disk toolkit. And uh, it looks like it's doing something. It was looking like it was doing something. Now it seems to have stopped. Uh, the light's not blinking. Did this before when I tried partitioning using just the button. So should I abort and retry? Yeah, it's probably a good idea. But uh, definitely does get some recognition with this version. So maybe I need to find version two and give that a go. Uh, version one just may not have support or something. I don't know what they implement when they update things. I'm not going to read the updated log but uh, yeah let's let's see what happens okay so I had some progress there is now a new volume on the desktop it's only 160 meg but it's there uh, so yeah I don't know maybe it just doesn't like uh, two gigabytes two gigabyte partitions which would probably make sense given that this machine and OS is probably 94 95 at the latest uh, so let's just go ahead and give it a reboot. Now I've just copied the system folder off the floppy disk onto the new volume, which is also apparently bootable. So, so I'll see what happens. Fingers crossed. Well, that's looking good. Oh, cry me a river. It worked. <laughs> there you go. Very cool. So now I can Make a whole bunch of partitions, work out what the maximum partition size is. Well, that's very cool. Let's just... So, there's the lesson. When you're not having any luck, just keep trying, because chances are you're doing something wrong. <laughs> Trial and error, my favourite way to work things out. So HTT Primer is the application I've been using, which uh, seems very similar to the other one, so it's quite possible that uh, it's a direct descendant of it. But as you can see, the layout is pretty much the same. So even now the partition button brings up a window. Uh, the trick was not to scan the drive or anything like that, so... Uh, modify, let's have a look. So I set the size as 160, maximum is 2 million K. So auto mount was enabled and I had to tick bootable to make it bootable. Put a password on it. That's pretty cool. Uh, look at that. Oh. 1800 megabytes available. Well, I don't know what was going on, but it uh, looks like now I'm going to be able to boot back to that floppy and create a nice big sized hard drive. Just one volume. Well, let's give it a go. Stay tuned. The wrong button. Still getting used to this. Alright, so here we are booted up to the floppy disk again, uh, disk tools, just to, with a copy of HDT Primer, uh, version 1.6, so I didn't even bother updating to 1.63. Call me lazy, there was probably some major bug fix or something, upgrade offer, whatever. Um, so now the partition button works, which is great news, it brings up this. Simply press new, call it Macintosh, 
HD. We'll go with the full blown two two gigs. See what happens. Uh, tick the bootable button there and uh, hit create. And that's it. It's amazing how simple things can become. And now I've just got to go through and track down my copy of 7.6 is uh, 7.6, 7.6.1, and uh, get that installed, and uh, we'll be away. But that's how you do it. So thanks for watching. Uh, hope you've learned something. I know I have, as always. Learning is the best thing you can do with your spare time. So we've been using a likely counterfeit SanDisk adapter with some generic no-name memory card there. As you can see, it's even got those little warranty stickers, which makes it look even more dodgy. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's that. Uh, I'll go back in. Uh, never mind. Uh, so it will fit in the case as well, which is great news. I have removed the bezel. Um, it adds a little bit of size on. You can lift that off or put it on. There's actually a little daughter board in here. The SD card, uh, memory stick and picture card or seems to sort of sit on top of the, I guess, main board that runs to the SCSI connectors and things and has the main um, chip on it. But other than that, it's pretty good. So I'm very happy with that and uh, hopefully you'll pick up one too. Good old PCD60B. Running firmware revision 1.2.8 with read-write capabilities. So thanks for watching. Hope you've learned something. As I've already said before, retrojunkie.net for more. Uh, just one more thing. I did uh, just try putting the bracket on off the hard drive and what do you know? It actually fits. You'll need to find some uh, screws that are used more on uh, CDs and optical drives. And only two of the four screws will go in. But if you have a look at the, the mounts there, the clips... They line up pretty damn well, and that drive is not going anywhere. As you can see, the cable here is a bit more squished up the end here. And uh, the Molex connector is pretty much flush up against its own connector. But it's all good. Uh, as you can see on the front there, there is clearance for the case. And if the SD card does work, which I haven't really tested, which I should, um, it might even be worth doing a case mod to uh, just uh, maybe dremel across a little slot in the front of the case. And then you could, in theory, have an SD card slot. I did have to remove the bezel, though, uh, because of the this sort of bezel around the bezel, uh, sort of sitting down too close to the case causing it to sit up. So remove that. But there you have it. Cool huh? Leave a comment and subscribe. RetroJunkie.net